Hey guys, it's Cassie and today we are going to be going through some of the most iconic, famous IT bags and whether they're still in style today, right? A lot of these happened in the 2000s, that was IT bag era, let me tell you. Do we still think that they would be on trend today in style? Obviously, trends and styles are all very personal, right? This is just my opinion. So if I think that one of these bags looks a bit dated, but you love rocking it, that you go and do you. Rock that sodding bag. This video actually came about because a couple of you suggested it. Last week I did a video that was on what is an it bag and nine potential it bags from this year. And a couple of you guys suggested, do you wanna know what? Let's go through the it bags of yesteryear and are they still popping today? So. That is what we're gonna go through. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <coughs> Never. Guys, are you ready? Let's go. I want to quickly touch on two very famous it bags, and that would be the Fendi Baguette and the Dior Saddlebag, both of which icons in their own right, shall we say. Now, the Fendi Baguette really, I think, was most popularised by Sex and the City. It's one of the first bags that comes to mind when you think of it bags. The Dior Saddlebag was living its very best simple life, life. Very Paris Hilton, very Nicole Richie, very nostalgic. Um, both of these bags kind of, you know, went away, had their moment, and then got reissued on an, and are now very much popular parts of each respective brand. The Fendi Baguette is now pretty much a Fendi classic bag, or they are definitely treating it as such. Lots of different variations. We've just had the 25th anniversary of the Baguette, an entire collection dedicated to that bag. The Dior Saddle Bag got reissued a few years ago and it's still been doing very well. They've just released a version that comes complete with a crossbody strap. I did just kind of want to treat those as one because they are still very much on trend, still very much popular and I think the rest of the bags in this video maybe there's a little bit more discussion about. Let's get nostalgic, starting off with bag number one, the Celine luggage. Okay, a little bit of history. Debuted for the Spring Summer 2010 collection. This was Phoebe Philo's debut collection for Celine and this bag quickly became the it bag. It has this very recognisable face on the front with the little zippers the mouth, right? Let's not lie. And then you've sort of got these sides that sort of poked out from the bag. It's very distinctive, it's very recognisable, and it came in lots of monochromatic colours, but also try like a three colour situation as well. Those were the ones that were really popping at the time, if I do say so myself. And also they did have exotic versions. There was an even wider version of this bag, the Celine Luggage Phantom, which is the one that I opted for. I went absolutely mental for this bag. It was the be all and end all for me. I still have it. And I rocked her like it was nobody's business. Now, this bag is still very much produced today. But I would say a couple of things. Number one, Celine now has a new creative director, Eddie Slimam. And I will say that although having different creative directors shouldn't really determine a bag being in or out or whatever, but the whole vibe of Celine is very different to what Phoebe Philo's Celine was. And I think that that also has a bit of effect on what's sort of in style for the brand. It's definitely not a bag that they push to the same extent as some of the other styles that they have. It's also still a bag that is widely bought today, but it's also a bag style that I see a lot in outlets. Whenever I've gone to a Celine outlet, there's always luggage bags there. It tends to be the bigger sizes. I think the smaller sizes are probably a bit more popular now because they do have a shoulder strap. The bigger sizes don't tend to. Something that would be maybe a bit more in style for today is the more monochrome as opposed to the tricolor ones. And I know that these are very user-friendly, very, um, it's a bag that a lot of people like for a work bag as well because it's very durable so I get it but it's one of those bags that doesn't overtly look dated like it doesn't look like it's very like oh my gosh you know that's from ages ago so it, it's an odd one in between I don't think it's it bag status has stayed with it I don't think it's overtly dated it's a weird one in the middle for me that's sort of like it's not like super trendy and on style but it's not horrendously out of style blah 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 anyway it's a weird in between one for me that one the next one is 
The Chloe Paddington bag. Right, let's get into the history. This hit the shelves in 2005. In the first production run of this bag, she sold out. I actually found in my little research for this video, I found a very old bag snob article about this bag and I just wanted to read a little bit of it for you that sort of encapsulates why people loved this bag so much at the time. So the leather is super slouchy and soft but durable and scratch resistant. Medium is functional for every day and perfect for a fun night of clubbing. That one actually got me chuckling a bit because I can't imagine taking a medium sized bag clubbing. You know she rarely goes out these days anyway but I'm just saying. To note this bag weighed three pounds, which is the equivalent of 1.3 kilograms. This is a hefty bag. I think the majority of that is the huge padlock that was on the front of this, the biggest design element of the bag. If you look at it, it's very sort of slouchy. There's no structure to this bag at all. It didn't have a crossbody strap, so it was very much a shoulder, a crook of the elbow situation. So I think that something like this looks quite dated and I don't think it's particularly sort of like trendy for now in the conventional trends that we're seeing. Due to a number of reasons, I think the huge lock, we are enjoying like chunk and chains, but maybe not in this exact way. I think the huge lock, I think the contrasting stitching and the amount of it is also something that we don't really see in bag trends at the moment. Also the complete lack of structure. I think that even slouchy bags these days have a bit of built-in structure even if it's just due to the leather that's involved. There are some slouchy bags but this really is like you know a different level of slouch in my opinion. I don't necessarily think she's aged that well. <laughs> Next up the YSL Muse bag and I'm calling it the YSL one because you know Saint Laurent had it hadn't had its name change then. Huge tote, zip across the top right a huge Y stitched into the centre and then you had your top handles. Again, very much a top handle situation or a, depending on the size you could weasel it up to your shoulder but there's no crossbody strap which I think is quite interesting if you look at a lot of these. The it bags weren't crossbody bags which I think is fascinating. This came in three sizes known as the medium, large and the oversized. This definitely was a huge bag, obviously many variations seen on many a celebrity, all of that. But I actually don't think it's aged badly at all. I think it's something that very easily could fit into today's styles. You wouldn't bat an eyelid. I think that it wouldn't look out of place at all with 2022 and 2023 bag styles and trends happening. We're loving BBE, she ticks the box. I don't think that there's anything about this bag that's particularly, it's quite an inoffensive bag style in general. There's nothing too brash, too over the top about it. Whereas if you look at like the Chloe Paddington with the massive padlock, you can see sort of how that might age it. But I really actually think that the YSL Muse is something that the style has stood the test of time actually. Bag number four, the Marc Jacobs Stam bag, named after Jessica Stam, a model, and this came out in 2005. This bag was very popular that the waiting list had to actually be closed for it. It looks like an oversized lady's purse with its little like kiss turn lock on the top, had a huge chain and there was a lot of quilting. Hear me out on this one. I think looking at it as it is, I don't think it's particularly in style for today, but I think if there were like little design tweaks, they could re-release this tomorrow. For example, I think if they tweaked, I don't think the kiss lock is something that we can be bothered to be fiddling with today. I think if they changed the clasp, if they maximised the quilting, so it wasn't too small, it was like, you know, bigger quilting. We're loving chains, chains is a huge trend. Huge trend. I actually think that just from like those little tweaks, they could re-release this bag. So that one, I actually don't think they're too far off today. Next up, the Balenciaga motorcycle bag. Ooh, okay. Launched in 2001, this bag had a cult following. It was the cool girls bag, launched by Nicolas Gesquier. And this had such a celebrity following. Might I just say that Mary-Kate Olsen's love for this bag has truly lasted almost two decades. This to me is fascinating. So 2004, Mary-Kate Olsen gets her Balenciaga motorcycle bag in a mint green and this bag 
is rocked with a capital R. She rocks this bag throughout university at NYU. This bag, apparently, there are some like eyewitness reports <laughs> that this bag had been through it. This bag was like covered in pen. She'd taken it clubbing. Like it was beaten and battered and she absolutely loved this bag. She was recently spotted with the same bag again. It's now a slightly different shade of green as time has gone on and as you know, what, what it's endured apparently. But I think it's fascinating as well with celebrities, especially because they have such access to these things to see one literally having lasted almost two decades, the same bag, that's love. That's real love right there. In 2021, Balenciaga reissued it. It's slightly different design tweaks called the Neo Classic. But in my opinion, the Balenciaga motorcycle slash city bag, whatever you want to call it, will always be in style. And I don't know how they've done it, but it really has transcended seasons and trends and what's hot and it's just consistently stayed in which i think is a is a huge feat for something that's not conventionally classic like a chanel classic flap or something like that it's very edgy it definitely has its own personality but i think that is like the perpetual cool girl bag bag number six the fendi spy bag a 2005 hit similar to the Chloe Paddington in shape. It was slouchy, it had these braided handles, the number of variations were very vast. It had this sort of odd fold over closure. It was seen on so many celebrities at the time, but even more recently, Rihanna was spotted out with it, Bella Hadid was spotted out with this bag as well. And while I sort of think it has similar issues as the Chloe Paddington with maybe why it's not so much in style at the moment, I think it's the slouch, I think maybe something to do with the handles or the way the bag hangs. I also don't think it's as distinct as the Chloe Paddington. I don't know, because I can kind of see them, again, tweaking this in a way that, you know, makes it a little bit more current or modern or whatever you want to say. I'm undecided, okay? Sometimes I don't have to have a clear-cut opinion. I'm undecided. I don't think it's as obvious to me as the Chloe Paddington. And finally, this one was a whole collection, but it really sort of, you're gonna see, the Louis Vuitton Murakami collection, specifically the Multicolor. This collaboration started in 2002 and actually ended up being a sort of like regular collaboration between Takashi Murakami and Marc Jacobs, who was the creative director of Louis Vuitton Women's at the time. For that 2002 first collection, he came out with 13 different bag styles in the multicolor monogram that was in 33 different colors, I believe, on a white or a black background. And this was everything. The whole collection was very iconic. I think it holds a lot of nostalgia. There is this inherent fun about the collection that doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, all it is is just a multicolored version of the monogram, but it really just gives it a completely different personality from, you know, the normal monogram at Louis Vuitton. Now, I think with this collection, this is one of those collections that I think of when I think of Y2K bags, right? And they did this in the pochette accessoire, the speedy, so many different bag styles. And to me, this was, is, and will forever be an it bag collection. They're just, whatever it was about this collection, I think it's universally beloved. It is one of those very historic collections that everybody knows about. I think it's a collection very close to people's hearts. It's still very sought after today on the pre-loved market and, you know, in the vintage market. It's such a, it's just a happy collection. You know, you see one of these pieces and you smile. I think that it's one of those collaborations and, you know, we see a lot of collaborations today, but it's one of those collaborations that stays with you. So, always a knit bag. Let me know what you thought of this video. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are and in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.